Where are we? This is Mark McNeese in New York City with my co-host Rick Rose in Shreveport, Louisiana, and you're listening to Age to Perfection, where age is embraced and life is celebrated. Welcome to another Age to Perfection podcast. Everyone, this is Mark, and uh, I'm in New York City today. I've got Rick Rose, my co-host, in Shreveport. Uh, I believe, Rick, you've been all over the place lately, but I believe you're back in Shreveport. I am back home, back from Wisconsin. You got it, Mark. Excellent. And our guest today is a filmmaker named Catherine Brooks from uh, New Orleans. And not necessarily from New Orleans, but currently in, um, in New Orleans. So, Catherine, welcome to the podcast. Well, thank you for having me. By the way, I just said you uh, about being where you're from. You grew up in a, a small bayou town. What was where was that? I grew up uh, on the North Shore of New Orleans uh, in okay. Covington, Louisiana. And uh, but I lived in Los Angeles for 20 years. And I've just recently moved back and started doing uh, films and production here uh, in New Orleans. That's awesome. All three of us at one point probably lived in L.A. at around the same time. Now, I understand that you left. You just got up and left Covington at 16 years old, lived out of your car, and just decided you want to do the Hollywood thing, huh? Yeah, I did. I always, you know, I, I grew up knowing that I wanted to make movies. And... um I really didn't fit in very well in a small southern town. And so right when I could drive, I left. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I got to L.A. and I had no money and uh, lived in my car. And, um, you know, it was, a, it was a slow process. I didn't, I didn't start really shooting anything for a year Um but I got a camera from a pawn shop and I started documenting street life and um, that kind of evolved and it got into the hands of, of someone and a producer and that kind of, it, it just, my career went from there and uh, it's luckily not stopped. So I'm very, very fortunate. It was hard, but I, you know, I kept at it. Well, before we get to, um, the project you have now, Confidential. Mm -hmm. uh, can you just talk a little bit about, about your career? You said that you know you you got you got your footage into the hands of a producer, and uh, what sort of arc was after that? Well, I did the first thing I ever did that people like you know saw was a short film, and uh, it went to festivals, and from there I got a manager from that short film. That short film got into the hands of an executive at MTV. And then I was given a chance to work on a new MTV pilot called The Osbournes. And that was my first big gig, was uh, directing on The Osbournes. And that put me in reality television directing for about 10 years. And I did shows like The Real World, The Simple Life, you know, all the reality shows back then, The Newlyweds. Um, but during that time, and I love documentaries, and during that time, reality television was still real. Uh, we weren't manipulating it and scripting it like it is now. Mm -hmm. um, so I enjoyed it. Uh, but then when it got scripted, I didn't enjoy it. And I went back to film. And that's where, you know, I just knew my passion was. And so I, I stuck there. And mm -hmm. I did a movie in 2006 called Loving Annabelle. And, um, and then I did a movie with Elizabeth Shue called Waking Madison a couple years after that. And, uh, yeah, so it's, um, I'm just focusing, you know, on film. My passion. That's awesome. And, and, and I know Annabelle that. still remains to be one of the most popular or well-received films in the LGBT genre, if you will. The movie that I'm most excited about is uh, how I know your work is Face to Face. If you can talk to our listeners yeah. a little bit about it, this is where you literally traveled across the country and met 50 people from Facebook. 
That's pretty much what it was, right? Yeah, I, I did. I wanted to do a documentary. And um, in between doing, you know, my narrative features. And I, I went through a phase about three years ago where <clears throat> I was just using social media so much that I stopped feeling like I was connecting to people on an organic level. You know, I was just tweeting and I was texting and I was, everything was so social media and technology based for communication. And I had 5,000 friends on my personal Facebook page. (laughs) And I, and I thought, I thought to myself, how can I have 5,000 friends and still feel lonely? Like, that doesn't make any sense. You would think if you had 5,000 friends, you would be very fulfilled and very, you know. Um, right, right. And that's how, it, that's how it started. I posted on my page. I said, so I had this idea. And in the moment of having the idea, I posted on my Facebook. I said, the first 50 people who say, yes, I'm coming to your town. And I'm going to spend the day with you face to face. And we're going to see if we're really friends. And uh, that day I launched on Kickstarter. Um, I raised, you know, over $100,000. I left to shoot the movie, I guess, about four months after that. And I traveled 23,000 miles. Um, I met all of these amazing people with their amazing stories. And yeah, made it into a documentary and it was released, uh, in 2013 and I had my dream come true with it. My, my dream was always when I was a kid that I wanted to have a movie screen at Grauman's Chinese theater because when I first arrived in LA when I was 16, there was a red carpet event there and I was so mesmerized. I was like, Oh my God, I want to have a movie there so bad. I love it. And so face to face got to open there. So it was very, um, it was, it was amazing. I, I'm very thankful for that movie. It, it really changed my life. I used to, um, I lived in LA and I long years ago and I would take the bus to work before I had a car and we always, the bus always went by, um, for a while it was man's Chinese. And it went, mm-hmm. it went back to Groman's, and I remember seeing red carpet, purple rain. I remember seeing the uh, the premiere of purple. <clears throat> I didn't go, but I see it was happening, and they had the red carpet and all of that stuff. When you are you a one person crew, by the way? When you went around meeting these people, was it just you? I had one other person with me um, that was shooting and also did audio, and then um, sometimes I had a producer with me. But I wanted to keep it very intimate, and that's why I made sure that I could get the quality that I needed and still have just one cinematographer shoot it and do the audio as well. That's fantastic. That's like reality reality at its best, not even this forced reality TV. Yeah, I love that. (laughs) Now, you've got a new Kickstarter project going. Let's talk about Confidential and why... This, imp- this movie is important to you to make? Um, there, are two, there are two reasons why it's important. Two reasons that I'm very passionate about right now. Um, I, you know, when I made Loving Annabelle, it was um, the experience of making that reminded me of how I made movies when I was younger, where it was all about the art and the story. And I think for a while, um, I kind of got wrapped up in the machine of making movies. And I don't know if that makes sense. When I say machine, I mean like, um, you know, I need this certain actor to be in it so that I can have star quality so more people can see it. Or I need this amount of money so I can have this big cinematographer do it. So it, do you know what I'm saying? Like the the Hollywood part of it. Definitely. Definitely. Yes. Yes. So I kind of, I kind of got lost in that for a while and I needed to go back to that root of making a narrative, not a documentary, a narrative with actors 
where it wasn't about names or money or anything like that. And so that, that was the first thing that I knew that I needed to do, that I was passionate about. And then I knew that I needed to do a story that I could really <clears throat> sink my teeth into. And two things that I am aggressively passionate about is uh, changing the stigma of how we view mental health. Um, that's one of the things. And the other thing is um, love and my belief that love should always be able to overcome all obstacles that it faces if it's true love. So I created a story between a psychiatrist and her female patient. And I was able to tell two very poignant stories of, you know, mental illness and the challenge of being a creative person um, and kind of quote unquote artistically crazy. Um, and also, you know, when you fall in love with someone kind of like Annabelle, a teacher and a student, that's a very taboo relationship. You're not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to, you know, a teacher and a student aren't supposed to love each other. That's, that is out of the question. So I'm just taking it a level higher. I'm saying a psychiatrist and a patient. Um, so, you know, the story is about can these two people overcome these major rules and restrictions um, in order to have their love um, manifest. Um, so that's, that's kind of, that's, that's what it's about in a nutshell. <laughs> well, it's... Um... It sounds really fascinating. You've got a February shoot date in there, shooting dates yeah. in February. And and it's also, I'm, I'm just curious, um, one of my final questions about um, Kickstarter. And, and it seems to have worked for you. What's could, I'm just curious because I've never put anything on Kickstarter or, or Indiegogo or yeah. any of that. Has it, has it been, um, were you surprised with the first time? Does it re work really well for you? What are, do you have any thoughts about Kickstarter? I think it's wonderful. Um, I think that, you know, it's one of the hardest things about making a movie is raising the money to make it. And, um, you know, even in this day and age, it's hard to get LGBT stories on the screen. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't, I don't know why, you know, it's, uh, with the success of so many movies like Brokeback Mountain and, you, you know, I mean, I could go on and on. You would think that, that, you know, good LGBT material would, would easily make it to the screen if it's, you know, good and has quality, but it's still a challenge. And Kickstarter is a way that, you know, whether it's the mental health industry or the LGBT community. Um, it allows people that are passionate about wanting to see a story to participate in manifesting it. Mm -hmm. And you also give back. Like I, you know, if someone say pledges for this current Kickstarter $10,000, they get a producer credit on the movie. They get to be a part of making the movie. They get to come on set. They get to see the rough cut before anyone else. They get to come to screenings. So it's a great opportunity if someone wanted to say break into the industry. Mm -hmm. So you, you, you're able to give back. Even if people just donate $25, they get the first digital download of the movie. They get a copy of the script signed. You know, there's all these rewards. So it's an exchange of artistic energy. And I like that. I like that a lot. Well, I'm glad you tapped on the LGBT part. Our audience, obviously, is LGBT. And as, as we were talking, you know, 10, 15 minutes in an interview, Mark and I often talk about this, Catherine. I'm sure from your experience being, you know, 16 and going to L.A. to your experience today, being closer to Covington, just one bridge away down New Orleans. It's interesting because as we've acclimated as a community, you know, back from the days of fighting for who we were in the, or expressing who we were in the 70s, fighting for who we were in the 80s, looking at who we really want to be in the 90s, and then the 2000s being accepted and able to marry the person we love, regardless of sex, 
And then the whole transition mm-hmm. into transgender and which is the new gay, which was the old lesbian, whatever, whatever. It's so complex. Mm-hmm. But as we're talking, trying to find ourselves, it's like, is there even that audience? Or are we now just integrated people? I can talk openly to my 17-year-old nephew about my relationship with my partner, which I wouldn't have even touched for 17 years. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. I'm going to take it and get personal with you. As uh, and, and Eva, our mutual friend, said I could ask you this, but let's talk about looking for love in the lesbian world. I mean, is it a challenge, one that Mark and I don't face? We face a different type of love, but is it tough being a lesbian and finding real love? I honestly have to answer that by saying I think it's tough to find real love nowadays, period. Yeah. You know, I I have a real challenge with that. And, um, you know, it's part of the reason that I wrote this, you know, I, I, I think that it's difficult too, because like you were saying, you know, about defining ourselves and pushing to be accepted. And I don't know about you, but it just seems so, um, I don't know. It just seems like in this day and age, we need to start <clears throat> kind of stripping away these stereotype um, things that we kind of label ourselves as. And that's what I'm trying to do right. as a filmmaker. And I'll just give you an example. I want to make movies where it's not about being gay, but it's just a story where the characters happen to be in love. And what I mean by that is I get very, um, not bored, but I've seen enough gay movies where it's about the conflict of coming out or the conflict of struggling with sexuality. I want to see more movies where we are just on the screen as characters struggling with issues that everybody struggles with. Do do you know what I mean? So it's not, you know, and that's why I just, I I really hope to make movies like that and try and expand my, I I don't know. I just want to find love and be in love and not have it be so difficult and so based on sexuality and such a struggle because I, I tend to find that with, people that I'm attracted to, you know, oh, um, and yeah. I don't know why, you know, but, it's, yeah. I, I like that. I, I think it's a, uh, for you from, you know, the 20 minutes I've gotten to know you, of course, I've had some, uh, some familiarity with you, both Mark and I through seeing your reels or seeing your work. And then of course my discussion with Eva, but mm-hmm. it sounds like it's a perfect time for you, Catherine, to do a blend of where your career is headed and where society is headed. Um, you know, from your background in reality TV to this, it's a, uh, it's always an exploration and sometimes it's interesting. We make it so challenging when we could really just pare it all back and just really make life easier. Sometimes I think, um, some, but Mark and I are grateful you joined us. I got to mention this though, Mark, it's big election day in, in Louisiana, of course, uh, the Landry election, which is happening right in your own backyard there, Catherine, big election, any weigh-ins or any thoughts on, on where our country is headed? From both of I the, think from our, either, of us? Co- either. Yeah. Both of you. It's a you mess. go. You go first. <laughs> it's a mess. I don't have a clue where it's headed. I really don't because I could say where I think it's headed, and then it goes in another direction. I, to me, it's such a. Such, I'm you know I'm not disagreeing with you, Rick, but it's such a vague where the country's headed. Like I have no clue. Um, I did want to throw one thing out there really quick because we're hit. We're get, coming up on the twenty minute mark. Um, uh, just to Catherine's comments about just having characters who are just characters. I think I've been, I was, I fell in love with How to Get Away with Murder, Shonda Rhimes' show, Viola Davis. The gay guy on there, he's not Cam on Modern Family. He's not the gay character. He's just a guy. He's just a gay guy. And he has, they have great sex uh, in a, on a mainstream show. And that's what came to my mind when you were talking about that, because I think it's a show like that. And it's somebody like Shonda Rhimes who can help get the public past those boxes yes yes you just that that's it that's it i just want to get outside the box you know so that i'm not walking around i i you know i i am passionate about equality i am passionate about where our country is heading i am passionate about all these things but i also 
am an artist and I also feel like it's my duty and my responsibility to try to make art that will expand the minds of people that may not understand the lives that we live. And sometimes you have to do that by like just stepping outside of the box and just being a character, just dealing with things that everybody deals with. And that makes it relatable. And then more people understand, hey, we're just people too. You know, like a guy told me the other day, I was talking to him and he's like, well, you people are getting more accepted. And I'm like, what do you mean by you people? <laughs> you know, I'm like, what, what is that? I, I need to understand what that means. Everybody needs to be accepted. We all want to be accepted. You know, it's not just you people. I'm sure you have your own issues that you need to be accepted for. So just concentrate on that and then you'll know how I feel. And do you, do you, have, a, do you have an opinion about where the country's going? If, that, if you can visualize that, I can't. Well, I have to, <clears throat> for, for me and my own well-being, I have to believe and have faith that we are going in a direction that is going to bring more acceptance, unity, and love. I have to believe that because if I don't, I start to wilt. And so even if I'm just glossy eyed, you know, I just have to keep fighting and believing that we're going in that direction. Um, because if I don't, I get sucked into that just very sad space of separation and inequality. And I, I can't do that. I have to, I have to believe we're going to, we're going to be okay. And we're going to, we're, we're going to fight to make a difference and, and we're doing it. And, I, I don't know. I, I feel good about it. I, I, I think that we will continue to um, to change things, and we are. You know, things are so much different than it was when I was growing up in that small town. You know, I didn't oh, yeah, even. It's, I didn't even. <laughs> it's really yeah. different. It's really different, and I because now we could have a whole other conversation. This, but um, <clears throat> but yeah, yeah, and I agree with you. I mean, you put it much better than I could because I couldn't even off the top of my head I couldn't say but I agree with you I think that we're moving you know it's it's not always identifiable but we're, but we're moving toward um just a better world <laughs> at least in yes you know Rick, one you have, can hope uh, and one can can fight <laughs> yes Rick that's you have right any, and we can you know we could all just join hands virtually and sing kumbaya and no don't fight. say that it's please <laughs> <laughs> no, Mark, you know where I'm at. I, yeah, I'm just a little <laughs> more out there. And uh, I don't tend to go down the slope of depression. I tend to be an over-enthusiastic person. And that goes the other route when I'm uh, – I don't go down the slippery slope the other way. I go the other way and I get pissed and I want to punch and I want to you know, do all those things that I shouldn't be doing. But it is uh, it is a different world and we're so grateful to have made this connection. And when I'm down in New Orleans, Mark, you're heading to New Orleans <laughs> next year. Maybe we can all get together sometime when you and your husband come down. It's possible. I, yes. I, it's news to me, but thank you for telling me that I was going there next year. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, and Catherine, I'll, um, I'll, this will be posted at lgbtsr.org on Tuesday, and I'll send you that link. And it's been a, just a great pleasure. Good way to start the Saturday for me. Oh, that's amazing. It was good to talk to you guys. And I'll send you, when you post it, I'll send you the link to the Kickstarter, too, so people can check it out. Perfect. Oh, I've got that for Confidential. I have that. Link. Oh, you do? Yeah. Oh, perfect. Okay, so awesome. Well, you rock. You guys rock. It was, so, <laughs> it was so awesome talking to you. I could go on for an hour about the subject we were getting into. <laughs> oh, I could, too. There was a pair. These parents in Australia just recently did a, bir a re redid their birth announcement for their transgender son. And oh, I thought, cool. that's... That's amazing. Aww. Like who, who, you know, that's the kind of parents that we need in the world and we'll get there. We'll get there. But thank you again. We um, we're going to sign off okay. here and I'll get this to you um, as soon as it's up. Thanks. Rick. You both have a great day. Thanks you have everybody. Have a good day too. Have Bye. a great day. Bye. Bye.